What is happening everybody? Today I wanted to do a special video for y'all because recently we've just been doing a lot of fishing videos, not a lot of tutorials. And I know a lot of y'all like the tutorial so I'm going to get right to it. And Berkeley Gulp came out with, in my mind, one of the most effective lures. I'm not sponsored by Berkeley Gulp. This video is not endorsed by the way. And I've just been catching so many flounders, so many fish on this new color and it's a swimming mullet and uh, this lure is in my mind one of the most effective and versatile saltwater lures to use of all time so i'm going to get right to it i'm going to show you guys i'm going to do a lot of my gopro and i'm going to show you guys firsthand how to fish this lure so i'm going to do a full in-depth tutorial how to tie it how to work it and today we're going to be hopefully showing you guys some awesome fish catching action on this lure showing you guys how you guys can do this all right here we go so all we're going to do is we're going to take I love this color by the way. New Penny is my favorite color, Berkeley Gulp. And this one has like a glow on the bottom. I like to work this, I like to rig this so that it actually swims with the light color side on the belly, like that. So it really resembles like a mud minnow where, you know, they're kind of the belly is lighter and then I just, that's just the way that I like to rig it. But you can really rig these things anyway. As long as it looks like this, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to rig it. So you wanna take your swimming mullet right here, just stick it right into the head, just like that. And then you're gonna run the hook down it, down, so you're gonna run the hook to where it's gonna come out right here in the back part of the swimming mullet. And you're gonna run it all the way up. You want to make sure that there's no gap right here that it's pushed all the way up to the jig head. And that right there is what it's going to look like. It's very easy. That is ready to catch yourself some flounder. All right, so when y'all are fishing for flounder and trout, but especially flounder, you want your bait to be on the bottom. So what I'm doing is I casted it out. And the reason why I use a 3 8 ounce jig head is because um, it's a little heavier. You know, you can use quarter ounce, you can use one eighth ounce, but the three eighth ounce jig head is, to me, it's, you have to use it, especially when you're flounder fishing. Because flounder lie on the bottom <coughs> to feed. You're not gonna catch flounder unless your bait is close to the bottom. So one of the things with flounder fishing, especially with this Berkeley Gulp, is you want to fish it nice and slow. We're also fishing right up against some structure. Uh, we've got this uh, jetty right here. We've got an outgoing tide. Um, but this uh, swimming mullet, I love the way that it swims. It's got like the curly tail in the back. So all we're doing, if you can just see the action, is just small bounces that I'm making. We're just hopping it off the bottom. And it's just like, it just looks like a struggling mud minnow or you know a gudgeon is what we call them in saltwater terms they're just little mud minnows small minnows and they swim on the bottom and that's you know one of the main things that flounder feed on flounder feed on shrimp they feed on uh just small fish anything that's close to the bottom you know flounder they really eat anything um so all you're gonna do is again you're just bouncing it on the bottom these are not like big like jigs these are not big jigs, these are just small little bounces and you're slowly reeling. So as you can see, it's just small bounces. You want to make sure that you're always having contact with the bottom. Always. You don't want too much slack in your line, but you also want to make sure that your bait is on the bottom. And the way that you make sure that you have contact with the bottom is that you can, you can feel the bottom. You can feel your lure hit the bottom. You can always see there's slack in it. So, you know, you can have a little bit of slack, but not too much. So I just like to give it a few seconds for it to sit on the bottom. And then the first few jigs, I'm just gonna jig it. Maybe just a few little twitches of the rod. And I'm gonna reel down make sure that I regain that line. But I love this lure just because it's so easy to work. It, it really just kind of, is that a fish? Sure is. 
That's a decent fish. That's a decent fish. It's getting me up in the rocks. Dang it. Might be a keeper. Ah. He's better size. Not a keeper. Well, he... I'm gonna flip him up in the boat. Get in here. Dang. So there it is, you guys. That's the Berkeley Gulp in action. So what these flounder do is they lie on the bottom. So what these flounder do is they lie on the bottom just like this. So they've got their, let's see if you guys can see this. They've got their two eyeballs right here, right where my fingers are. And the way that these flounder uh, feed is they swim like this. So as you can see, let's see if he flaps it off. Come on, show us your stuff. There you go. So see the motion of their flounder. So they swim. Yeah, so there you go. So they swim like this. They don't swim like this. They can, but they swim like this. So the Berkeley Gulp just bounces off the bottom. And what he's gonna do is he's just gonna come up and he's gonna bite it. So that's that's how they feed. That's a decent sized flounder right there, y'all. We're gonna throw him back, catch and release today. So a lot of times you're gonna miss your fish. You're gonna miss your flounder when your line is slack and you're gonna feel the fish bite it and they're gonna realize it's not a real fish. It's not what they, you know, can swallow. So they're gonna spit it right back out. So that's a reason why. Ooh, son. That's a good one. Might need the net. Might need the net. Oh yeah. I think we need the net. Yes. That's a net. That's net. That's a net. That's a keeper. That is a keeper. Definitely a keeper. That's gotta be. Oh, that's a slot out, yeah. That's what we came out here for. That's how easy it is to catch fish on this lure. If you feel a fish bite, just keep working it. Flounder, they feed when there's one of them, there's typically uh, gonna be a few of them. Um, they do, so when you find one, there's probably gonna be a few others lying right near all around them. So if you feel a bite, just keep bouncing it. I typically use these two types of hooks. This one right here, I use typically for redfish. Um, and I do use it for flounder, but for this Berkeley Gulp swimming mullet. So because this bait is a little bit smaller and uh, it's just like a smaller profile bait, I like to use a hook with a smaller gap in it. So as you can see, this is a smaller gap. This is a wider gap. You can see it pretty clearly. This one's about double the width of this one to the right. So I like to use this jig head right here. This is a gotcha jig head. And here it is. I'll leave a link in the description of this video, but this is the jig head that I like to use. The weight that I use is a 3 8 ounce jig head. That's typically when you guys are fishing like 10 to 15 feet deep of water uh, or even more shallower than that, we want our bait to be on the bottom. So I use this with a 3 8 ounce gotcha jig head. The leader that I use is 12 pound test. I like to use fluorocarbon. That's just my preference. You can use fluoro or monofilament. And I recommend anything from eight to 20 pound test. And all we're doing is we're just imitating like a minnow or a bait fish kind of just bouncing and struggling on the bottom. And the flounder cannot resist it. There we go. He'll swim up and, and gulp it just like that. So that's why we just want to keep our bait right on the bottom. So anyways, let's catch a bigger one. All right, y'all. So this is the bait that we're using. Berkeley gulp, orange tiger. So yeah, I just want to make sure my bait's on the bottom just bouncing it and as you can see I'm reeling it very slow I'm just 
All I'm doing is hopping it off the bottom. John's hooked up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Fish. Oh, that feels a little bigger. Yes. You always want to keep tension on your fish when you're reeling it in. That's a bigger flounder. All right, y'all. A little bigger. Be a keeper in some states, but not in Virginia. Fun fish. So when I'm fishing flounder, I prefer to uh, fish with my rod tip up if I can, but sometimes I will fish my rod tip down. And what the rod tip down is gonna make your bait kind of skip across the bottom. When you fish it with your rod tip up, it's gonna hop. You know, I find that the flounder really like that kind of hopping motion. There's a fish. Oh. And you'll notice that I'm not really like setting the hook. You know, some people, they will like set the hook, but you know, honestly, I find that um, you're going to catch a lot of fish just by reeling down and giving it a subtle hook set. That's a fish. Yes, sir. Stay on. Yeah, yeah. Feels good. Stay hooked on there, buddy. Uh, might be no, not a keeper. Get close. Ooh. Better. Another one, about 14, 15 inches. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that flounder fishing Berkeley gulp tutorial. Um, yeah, so just want to show you guys specifically what I'm using now that I'm back at my uh, house, back at the compound. Um, got my big camera right here. So again, you guys, today we were fishing. This is the. This is it. This is the heat. Berkeley Gulp. Uh, this is orange tiger is the color, and it's four inches. Again, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below of everything we were using, so you guys can find that on this video. But here it is. If you guys see this in your tackle shop, I would highly recommend it. Again, this is this video is not endorsed. It's not paid. This is just my unbiased opinion. I'm just trying to help y'all out, catch more flounder, catch more fish, um, and it's not just flounder, trout puppy drum everything so love it four inches that's the size that I would go with so the setup that I'm using this is a like just regular medium action just my do everything trout bass rod everything so this is just a normal medium action um, I've got a 3000 series reel this is my favorite uh, reel it's a Florida fishing products reel but just any 3000, even like a 2500 series fishing reel. So I've got for my line, I've got braid. Uh, I've got a 15 pound braid uh, as my main line. And so for those of y'all who are new to fishing, just saltwater fishing, it's very important that you all have, if you're fishing braid, that you have it linked to a clear line so this is monofilament or I'm sorry this is fluorocarbon but you can use monofilament or fluorocarbon whatever you prefer so this is what we call our leader line so I have our 15 pound braid main line that is linked to uh, that is so I have my 15 pound braid that is tied using a, a uni to uni knot um, and that's how you tie your main line to your this is what you call your leader line it goes right to your hook and um, so I would highly recommend that y'all watch our knot tying um, tutorial video um, for, you know, the knot. So I would highly recommend that y'all watch our knot tying tutorial videos, but pretty much super easy. So I just have 15 pound braid main line linked to, uh, this is actually a 15 pound test fluorocarbon. And I've got this on my 3 8 ounce gotcha jig head right there. And that is all you need to do to catch these fish. So if, if I had one flounder fishing rig uh, or really just one do everything rig for inshore saltwater fishing, then that would be it. So hope y'all enjoyed that video. Hopefully that helps y'all catch more fish. And if y'all wanna see any more tutorials or anything else, then uh, hit us up, leave us a comment. If you guys like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to this channel, help us out so we can 
help y'all catch more fish and get y'all stoked on catching fish. But that's all I got for y'all today. Peace out.